All right, we're going to take another look at Jaleel McLaughlin, one of my favorite underrated players since like last December, January, before he ended up a Denver Bronco. A player I compared to Philip Lindsay with passing down chops. And you're going to see here, this is a play that's kind of a busted play from the offensive perspective. And he winds up with two yards on the play, which is a good thing. And I'm going to show you why here, because immediately here's the penetration that disrupts the backside puller. Okay, and McLaughlin sees it right away. And what he does is he heads downhill to get inside that. Now, the defender does a really savvy job of stopping and spinning back inside to pursue McLaughlin right here. But McLaughlin, you know, gets past him because of his quickness. But also, I love the fact that he can stay downhill read the leverage of this defender after he has already had to avoid a penetrator. So he doesn't self-destruct from something that comes off schedule. He sees the crease, heads downhill, feels the penetration from the backside pursuit, but he stays tight to his block here. He knows he's going to get hit, but he just maximizes the space, any space he can get by squeezing tight against his blocker, ends up running into his blocker some but it mitigates some of the hit that he has, and he's using his blocker as kind of a ballast to keep himself upright, keep his feet moving, and at least have give himself a shot to continue moving forward. That's savvy running, because a lot of guys would try too hard when they see this penetration right here to, to either bounce or their just legs would go like jello, and they they don't really know where to go and hesitate. He gets immediately downhill. He sees in the periphery the defender off the end here coming downhill. So he stays tight to his block to maximize the space between himself and that defender. And if it means hitting his own blocker, that's okay. It actually mitigates some of that contact. Two yards on a play like this is good. It keeps the offense on schedule on first and 10 rather than it being a second and 12. You get a second and eight. That's a big difference for playbooks in the NFL. And on that second and eight, look at this impressive run here for 38 yards. Toss play that he cuts back inside, weaves back outside to the boundary, and nearly accelerates past the defensive back here for a touchdown. Let's take a look at it from this point of view, and then we're going to watch it in slow-mo or like bit by bit. What you notice here, in addition to the speed, is how smooth he changes direction. And that's important. Here's that toss. You've basically got a three-on-three three in terms of blockers to defenders. And then you get him McLaughlin with the ball, so it's a four-on-three. As soon as he reads the leverage right here, watch his foot planted in the ground, gets downhill. And then he reads the leverage on this side, feel, but also feels the unblocked pursuit. He weaves himself downhill away from the pursuit, but still aiming towards the inside shoulder. And that manipulates the defender to hold his ground just enough that he can then bend it through this gap and get around the safety and CJ Mosley, 57, who is that, you know, who's that defender who's getting blocked right here. Watch at this. Downhill. Savvy enough to read that outside leverage and still press the inside shoulder while avoiding that pursuit. So smooth at doing it too. See how this is a kind of a ride the wave moment where he feels the, the direction of the block, setting up the direction with a little bit of a bend inside, forces Mosley to have to consider the inside and hold up there and then bend across the back. And that helps his blocker. He's making that block with 79 with that movement. This is a very refined runner in terms of setting up these blocks because a lot of backs would just head inside here or head outside here. Mosley sheds with the leverage he has and makes a tackle. Instead, forces Mosley to reconsider, plays it tight, gets a lot more yardage. Great run. Turns a potentially bad situation into a good play. Screenplay, throws a little wide of target, tips it to himself. Beautiful dip right inside the safety, splits the defense for the score. 
Let's take a look at it one more time. Let's see what we can see from the catch. Because usually when you get a soft rebound like this, see how the ball is just kind of a soft recoil, a soft bounce, and it isn't too wild? That's because he makes the first attempt sticking his hand out here and makes fingertip contact. It doesn't bounce off his palm. It bounces off his, his, his fingertips. You know why I know why that is without us having a really tight look at it? Because, first of all, you can see that the ball kind of comes off his fingertips here because that's his palm. Second of all, let's see if we can get it. Yeah, comes off the fingertips. Second of all, it's the quality of the bounce. If it ricocheted wildly and off of his hand at a high volume and an erratic um, trajectory, it would have bounced off his palm. Fingertips, soft toss, allows him to turn and catch the ball. Still catches it with his fingertips. There's a safety reads that. Quick cut right across the face. And this is a sharp bend at full speed. Look how fast and smooth that cut is. This guy can corner, he can fly, catch as well, runs tough inside, understands how to stay tight to his blockers. It's a very impressive runner. Why I compared him to Philip Lindsay with receiving chops? Because like Lindsay, he's a lighter back, but he understands how to run between the tackles and he runs tough between the tackles in terms of where he's his aiming points are and what he does after contact with, you know, hits and wrap and reach attempts works downhill presses this crease outside see how he's pressing the defensive tackle to the side that he has the leverage holding him there and then working tight to the back of his block when you scrape blocks like that that's kind of a riding the wave moment again very good zone runners know how to ride that wave get tight and then just tunnel right behind it that maximizes the leverage advantage of the press that you create. The press outside forces the defender to stay there, stays tight enough that the defender thinks he can shed right here, and then just works behind his blocker. And look at all that space that's there because he doesn't declare to the side so early. And then he has that quick curvilinear bend and the ability to kind of kick his feet up enough to work through a reach and stay downhill here another outside in you know or inside out press there look at this good stick to stay out there head fake to stay in the middle and then works his way around and finishes strong very rarely do you see mclaughlin lose yardage even on plays where the defense has defended the gaps well this is a nice bounce for two yards. And I'm going to show you why. Let's look at techniques because sometimes the outcomes aren't good, but the process is. So there's the double team. Works downhill behind his fullback. This gap still is unblocked for the defender to get penetration here. See how he plants that foot and he's already got the outside foot with the toe pointed to the boundary. His hips are open to get outside. He takes an extra step to be able to really drive off that foot and accelerate away from that penetration of number three. One more time. See how deep that bend is? That allows for him to have a sharp, sharp stop, stop, a very quick stop, and a sharp turn outside. And when he plants, he can get that hip around quickly. And that's all the difference between this defender wrapping him for a loss and him getting downhill for a decent gain. Look at that nice little cut inside the linebacker, too. I mean, two yards on this play, that's better than a loss of three. Five-yard differential. Drop and wait. Good job. He has a good feel for, you know, peripheral vision. Let's put it that way. He has good peripheral vision because you're going to watch Number 30, blitz from the slot. And he bends around that. I mean, like, he sees that flash of color right here. Unblocked coming through. 
and dips out to the backside. Let's watch it one more time here. There's the defender coming. He knows not to stay downhill here. Plants, opens the hips, gets downhill three yards. And for a shorter, smaller runner, knows how to drop the pads and just finish to get through reaches and wraps and finish strong in the second and third level. Overall, very impressive runner. Might have a future as a lead back. I'm not sold on it because of the weight, but if he can play at 195, 200, not much difference between him and Austin Eckler in terms of promise. You know, he's faster than Eckler. He's quicker than Eckler. He's got vision like Eckler. He just doesn't run tough as Eckler between the tackles. And we need to see how good his pass pro can get and whether or not he can be even more dynamic as a route runner.